the interior of a large conference room with many benches and chairs. A woman, about 40 years old, wearing a black skirt and black leather or imitation leather heels set on her bare legs. In the video, the woman is standing with her legs in various positions. Occasionally takes one foot partially or completely out of the shoes. Moths are more efficient at pollinating plants than bees. We are used to thinking that bees are mainly responsible for pollinating plants. Besides, it is not without reason that it is believed that the disappearance of bees would have fatal consequences for humanity. Meanwhile, under the cover of night, plants are pollinated by other insects, which can deal with it even better. It's about moths. In new research, scientists at the University of Sussex suggest that these nocturnal butterflies are more efficient pollinators than bees. Moths are underestimated when it comes to their role in pollinating plants. Often we do not even realize that these insects perform such tasks. And they are more efficient at this than bees. At least that's what a recent study by scientists from the University of Sussex suggests. Their description and results were published in the journal PLOS One. There is no need to convince anyone about the importance of insects that can pollinate flowers. Their role for the ecosystem cannot be overestimated. It is thanks to them that plants are able to bear fruit, and therefore disperse their seeds. In this way, the animals not only receive food, but also gain more places where they are able to live. Therefore, it will not be an exaggeration to say that the health of the entire ecosystem depends to a large extent on the health of insects that pollinate plants. But the health of these insects is unfortunately not the best. Both climate change and the use of e.g. chemicals for agriculture significantly affect their numbers. We are therefore rightly concerned that bees, but also butterflies, which are also able to pollinate plants, are becoming less and less. However, recent studies clearly indicate that moths are also leading competitors in this competition. But how can you tell something like that? These studies were quite carefully prepared. Sightings were made at 10 locations in southeast England in July 2021. The researchers decided to focus on the blackberry inflorescence and check how many insects visit these flowers both during the day and at night. Special cameras were prepared to turn on when insects appeared at a given flower. By the way, it was also decided to check how quickly individual insects are able to pollinate flowers. The conducted observations showed that about 83% of visits that insects made to blackberry flowers took place during the day, which was rather to be expected. Nights in the summer are much shorter, which gave the moths less time in this context, but they were still able to serve 15% of the time in their night shift daily visits. It turned out that they are able to pollinate a given flower faster. This means that they should be considered more effective even than bees. Unfortunately, in the context of our future as humanity, moths are not throwing us a lifeline, because just like bees and butterflies, moths are gradually starting to disappear. This fact is very important for food chains. Because less insects mean less flowers to be pollinated, and therefore less food for birds or bats. The described research gives us reasons to take more seriously the protection of these unusual nocturnal insects. Anyway, scientists in Great Britain have already called in this context to increase the number of planted white flowers, but also to turn off unnecessary lighting at night which would certainly make it easier for moths to work. A tiny alcohol-powered robot. Robots are usually powered by batteries and electrical outlets. But not Robeetle. This insect-sized robot, weighing less than one gram, 
runs on methanol. What's more, he is able to lift more than twice his body weight, thanks to the alcohol-powered, muscular, system. Liquid fuels such as methanol contain more energy per unit volume than batteries. This means that the tiny methanol-powered robots do not require an additional external power source. So they can theoretically move with more autonomy than their electrically powered counterparts while maintaining their small size. Battery energy density is very low. So we needed new sources of energy, says Nesta Perez Aranchibia of the University of Southern California, who designed the Row Beetle with colleagues. We managed to make it so light and small because we don't rely on batteries, he adds. The description of the tiny robot for alcohol appeared in Science Robotics. The Row Beetle weighs just 88 milligrams and can lift objects up to 2.6 times its weight. It can move on surfaces with various textures, including glass or concrete pavement. It can also climb steep surfaces. It carries an additional 95 milligrams of fuel that can power it for up to two hours. The Row Beetle carries heavy loads using a system of artificial muscles that can contract and relax, just like real muscles. The system uses nickel-titanium alloy materials coated with platinum powder, which accelerates the combustion of methanol vapor. This causes the release of heat which causes the muscles in the robot's legs to contract, and when cooled, they extend again, which sets the robot in motion. Traditionally, the muscles of small robots functioned on external power sources or batteries. In the latter case, this significantly increased the robot's weight and size. The best batteries have an energy density of around 1.8 megajoules per kilogram. This is a fraction of what you get from animal fat, or about 38 megajoules per kilogram. The methanol-powered muscles used by the row beetle can use catalytic combustion to achieve energy levels of up to 20 megajoules per kilogram. The methanol, stored in the fuel tank triggers an energy-releasing chemical reaction that leads to the robot's composite muscles contracting into a programmed shape. This allows the micro-robot to move like a beetle. The robot can move while carrying an object weighing 230 mg on its back 2.6 times more than a row beetle alone or 1.3 times more than a row beetle and a full tank of fuel. The robot's authors are conducting further research to improve the row beetle's performance by using other fuel sources, including propane, which has an energy density of 50 megajoules per kilogram. Scientists also want to create a flying version of the row beetle, thanks to funds obtained from DARPA, the research department of the U.S. Department of Defense. We want to create the first fully autonomous flying robot, says Perez Aranchibia. Wendell Stein 7X fusion reactor sets new records. German physicists have achieved record plasma yields at the Wendell Stein 7X fusion reactor in Greifswald. The achievements of scientists bring us closer to an unlimited, clean and cheap source of energy. Experiments carried out from July to November in the Wendelstein 7X, W7X, Stellarator, which is located at the Institute of Plasma Physics Max Planck, IPP, in Greifswald achieved record results. Stellarator Wendelstein 7X has recently undergone a thorough reconstruction. And not the first one. As after previous improvements, these works have allowed to increase the performance of the device and break previous records. And soon. 
The next round of the W7X update will begin, which is to equip the reactor with, among others, for more heating power. In the previous extension, new measuring devices and heating systems were installed. The plasma vessel was also modernized and equipped with graphite plates protecting the inside of the chamber. In the future, they are to be replaced with carbon fiber plates. The experiments resumed in July this year and lasted for five months. After modernization, the physicists managed to achieve high plasma density of up to 2 by 1020 particles per cubic meter, values sufficient for the future power plant. The temperature of the plasma reached 20 million degrees Celsius. Through strong microwave heating, Plasma energy exceeded 1 megajoule for the first time without heating the chamber wall too much. The plasma was held for over 100 seconds, one of the best results in the world. Congratulations to the Wendelstein 7X team who set a new world record. The approach is right. Researchers have made important new findings regarding the future use of fusion power plants. In addition to renewable energy sources, fusion energy may be the energy source of the future. Scientists from Greifswald have taken an important step in this direction, said Anja Karliczek, German Minister of Education and Research. As for the temperature record achieved in a fusion reactor, it was recently achieved in China. In the East, Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, researchers have reached as much as 100 million degrees Celsius. This achievement is crucial in nuclear fusion research. They only held the plasma for 10 seconds. The temperature obtained by Chinese physicists is seven times higher than the temperature inside our sun. Inside our star, hydrogen nuclei fuse together at 15 million degrees Celsius. But there, they are aided by enormous pressure. On Earth, this requires much higher temperatures. Nuclear fusion is the process that drives stars. When the nuclei of small atoms fuse into larger ones, huge amounts of energy are released. These nuclei, typically hydrogen's heavier cousins deuterium and tritium, are positively charged and therefore repel each other. This repulsion can be overcome at a temperature of 100 million degrees. Only then will the necessary condition to initiate nuclear fusion be fulfilled. If this process could be recreated, millions of households could be powered with this energy. Humanity would ensure its energy security for years. In addition, the process is environmentally friendly as no harmful byproducts such as carbon dioxide emissions or radioactive waste are produced. Such hot plasma cannot come into contact with the walls of the reactor chamber, because they would simply evaporate. It is held by magnetic fields and floats almost contactlessly inside the vacuum chamber. This Wendelstein 7X magnetic cage is produced by a ring of 50 superconducting magnetic coils about 3.5 meters high. Stellarator Wendelstein 7X cost around 370 million euros. It was first launched in 2015 and since then it has been the largest device of this type in the world. An international team of scientists 
from many research institutes, including Poland, works on it. The Institute of Nuclear Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences, the Warsaw University of Technology, the Institute of Plasma Physics and Laser Microfusion, the University of the Pole and the National Center for Nuclear Research in SWIG participate in the project. Poland allocated approximately 6.5 million euros for this purpose. The Wendelstein 7X is not intended for power generation. The device is to prove that stellarators are suitable for use in future power plants. The very concept of a stellarator is a device for carrying out the controlled thermonuclear reaction has been known for a long time. It was introduced by the American astrophysicist Lyman Spitzer in 1950. The first device of this type was developed at Princeton University a few years after the concept of the stellarator was developed. But this design was quickly supplanted after Soviet scientists presented the design of the tokamak in 1968. Currently, most nuclear fusion experiments are conducted on tokamaks.